As Peter said, I'm Olivier, I uh, work for Forward Keys, and um, what I want to do with you today, in the 10 minutes uh, I have, is uh, to show you how travel data can provide us with some insights about the Chinese market. And I believe that these insights could enable travel trade professionals to perform better on this market. Before we uh, dive into this uh, topic. Just a few words about Forward Keys. Um, we're located in Valencia, but we've got clients uh, all over the world, uh, many of them in China. And we've got a peculiar way of analyzing uh, the travel markets. We don't use surveys, we just use hard data. And every single day, we collect about 17 million airline bookings, which are done worldwide, which are made worldwide, and uh, which are made via online or offline travel agencies. We structured this extremely quickly, almost real time, and that uh, gives us a good overview of past, current, and future uh, travel patterns. That's a huge amount of data that we've got in these databases. And uh, we plug in some more like information about airline schedules and capacities or any other type of information that our team of analysts find relevant for understanding the market. This said, let's see what this means for our understanding of the Chinese market. The plan for today is a focus on some success factors, five of them, and then some Q&A. First success factor is, I think, just understanding uh, when an opportunity arises. And I think tour tourism years are such opportunities. Tourism years are a, an initiative from the uh, Chinese government, and uh, basically it's all about enhancing the attractiveness of a destination. Uh, among leisure Chinese travelers. And um, as you can see on this, uh, on this timeline, tourism years are gaining momentum. They're gaining uh, uh, tractions over the years with more and more destinations being involved. The idea there uh, is uh, to boost uh, inbound and outbound tourism flows between China and its counterparts. 2018, it's the EU-China tourism year, you all know that. Uh, let's see what that means in terms of bookings. For the, I uh, looked at the uh, last four years of the month and we see that bookings to the EU are actually ahead of their uh, 2017 levels. Uh, and it looks better in Europe, I mean, for the EU, than for the rest of the world. So I'm not saying this is because of uh, the tourism year, but it's, a, let's say, a, a positive uh, framework, let's say, for growth. Second key success factor is uh, connectivity, and uh, direct flights are a key element uh, there. Of course, if it's easy to get to a destination, uh, you're more likely to get uh, more people from a given source market. And yeah, I'd like to, um, uh, to use Dublin as a case study because I think it illustrates the value of direct flights. Until very recently, there was no direct flight between China and Ireland. Uh, most Chinese visitors were transiting via uh, London. We saw last year and also for the uh, first quarter of this year a negative trend for uh, for Ireland with uh, less Chinese visitors uh, Chinese air arrivals being registered but this all changed in uh, June when three new direct lines were open direct routes uh, this was really a game changer first it uh, inverted it reversed the trend that is from negative I'm talking minus 7.8 percent during the first quarter uh, we saw all of a sudden positive results, and, and I think that's the key point there. Um, it made Ireland, and Dublin in particular, a standalone destination that is not necessarily combined with other, uh, other destinations. So it's really changing the product for uh, the Chinese market. 
Visa convenience is absolutely key. We are all aware of that. Just one example, or two examples, actually, uh, to illustrate this point. Serbia, which uh, uh, implemented a visa waiver program in January of 2017, and uh, so really a huge increase in Chinese uh, air arrivals to Serbia that year, uh, and it's a trend which continues up to this day. Croatia would be the second example. Uh, I like the, wasn't that one because uh, it starts with uh, more visa centers opened by Croatia in mainland China. And that produces some results for the beginning of the year. But the real boost was football. The excellent results of the Croatian football team until the final, and as a Frenchman, I'm not sorry that didn't, they didn't make it all the way to the end. But, but anyway, uh, the excellent prestation of the, um, of the Croatian team actually gave a lot of free publicity to Croatia. And in the, the summer months, we saw a huge increase of Chinese visitors to, uh, to Croatia. So it's often a combination of those various success factors. Next, the Chinese calendar. As you know, lunar calendar, a little bit tricky to understand when those uh, festivities are gonna fall. It's never the, on the same date from one year to the other. It's really tricky, but it's really essential to understand how this work, because that makes a big difference. We see it here on this, uh, on this chart. I'm not going too much into details, but this year, 2018, we had the mid-autumn festival falling on a Monday. And that meant that uh, it was uh, very tempting for many Chinese visitors to take these days off and then get two weeks of holiday, combining it with the, uh, with the Golden Week. That's what many of them did, and that meant a surge in uh, uh, departures on the Saturday, Saturday the 22nd. You see that the pattern compared with the year before, when Mid-Autumn Festival fell uh, during this period, is completely different. If you're a marketeer planning a campaign, or if you're a hotel manager, or you have a restaurant, whatever, it's really, to, really important to understand when those Chinese visitors are going to be in your destination. Because then you can have the right people on the work floor and give that welcome China feeling that uh, Chinese visitors really appreciate. Security perception, we all know that. The Chinese uh, market is very sensitive to security uh, issues. That means that when something happens, a terror attack, other uh, safety concerns, uh, we see a drop in the number of Chinese air arrivals. We saw that in Istanbul uh, in 2016, 2017, but we also see that in 2018, when the uh, image improved, it's also a China-Turkey tourism year, we have, once more, Chinese visitors going back to the destination, and uh, that means that this destination registers a huge uh, increase in number of visitors. Same thing in Europe, 20, Western Europe here, so that's excluding the UK. <clears throat> we see in 2016, with the terror attacks in Paris, in Brussels, in Germany, we see a huge drop in uh, Chinese arrivals. And Towards the end of the year, we saw that effect fading. We saw there were a lot of things being done uh, in these destinations like Paris to change the image. And uh, all of a sudden, we see that Chinese visitors are flocking back to these destinations. So it's really, really important to work on this safety, uh, safety feeling because it really matters. And last but not least, events. Uh, the World Cup. That one is a bit complicated. I'm not going too much into details, but what do we see here? In blue, Chinese uh, departures to Russia, and in red, Chinese departures to the EU. Beginning of the year, really good for uh, the EU. But all of a sudden, just after the Dragon Boat weekend, what happens? FIFA World Cup in Russia. And we see that uh, Ch the Chinese departures to the EU sort of store or even on a negative, uh, negative trend. Well, in Russia, they are doing great. The week when the World Cup stops, we see Chinese visitors flocking back to, uh, to the EU. Uh, so, in a way, it means that the, the World Cup in Russia has diverted probably some uh, flows from Chinese visitors 
from the EU to Russia, which is not such good news, but the excellent piece of news is that uh, Chinese people like soccer, they like football. And in 2020, uh, we'll have the UFA uh, European Championships, which will be hosted by 12 different cities all across Europe. And uh, that means that Chinese visitors will be there to fill in those big stadiums of ours. So that's pretty much it for today. It's a really a brief overview of the type of analysis we can, uh, we can make. We've said at a macro, uh, macro level, but uh, I mean, there's time for Q&A, so we can uh, switch perspective and go much more into details, visitor profiles and behaviors, if you wish. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Olivier. That's pretty amazing. You can look into the future. How long into the future can you predict with forward keys uh, flight data? It depends on uh, when you do these predictions. Let's be clear about this. We're not making any forecast. Mm. We're really just looking at actual bookings. Mm. And there are periods during the year when there are much more bookings being made than others. I think of uh, first quarter, the month of January in particular, is really absolutely crucial. Mm. That's why when you think uh, of the UK market, for example, that whole thing about Brexit, it's really, really crucial that mm. there is some uh, visibility on what's going to happen by the beginning of the year, because that's when people book. Right. I was really amazed to hear about your FIFA example, but I couldn't really see the scale there on the Y scale. Is How big is that? Is FIFA really becoming the world's biggest destination then? It's not a country, it's... It's, it's football. Yeah, exactly. Well, the world of football is big. Mm. You see uh, that it's, uh, it's uh, getting attractive for uh, a wide array of, uh, of markets. Everybody's getting interested into football, and that's what we see in, mm. the, uh, in the figures as well. Mm. Are there, what, what other uh, big events, drivers for Chinese outbound tourism uh, could you imagine and see uh, in your numbers for, for Europe? Well, we see, uh, we see positive things and we see also negative events. I mentioned the, uh, the terror attacks that has a very clear, mm. uh, clear impact. Um, Olympic Games are definitely uh, one of the mega uh, events to take care of, I mean, to, to consider. Um, then into, into details, to be honest, uh, I couldn't spot one specific sport, for example, that is particularly attractive to the Chinese market and which would uh, make uh, sure, a difference in terms like of booking. the October Festival in Munich or the Biennale in uh, yes, Venice. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. And um, it's, it's really interesting to see when people are booking. Mm. You know, if those destinations are doing some specific marketing campaigns, for example, during a given period, then we can see if those campaigns have led to more bookings mm. from the source market, mm. the cities where those campaigns are taking place, to the, uh, to the destination. We often hear that the Chinese uh, travel is really changing a lot, that group travel is, is not so dominant anymore. We also have the FITs as a growing segment. Do you see that in your numbers too? Yeah, can you, definitely. Can you spot that? that's, uh, that's, that's clear. Uh, we can see when people are traveling in groups or when people are traveling as, uh, as individuals. We see that uh, there's more and more people traveling as individual. Uh, another key key change is that we see more and more Chinese visitors coming from non-Tier 1 cities or non-special autonomous region uh, destination, Hong Kong, Macau. Um, and that has a lot to do with um, uh, improved uh, connectivity between those non-Tier 1 cities and other destinations. Um, that means that we've got more variety in terms of, uh, in terms of profiles. And, um, and that bodes well for the future. Mm. Um, and I think we should all keep in mind that only a fraction of, uh, Chinese, uh, of the Chinese population has a passport. Uh, so there's really huge, huge, huge potential. Right now, it's not only the big city citizens traveling, but also the smaller cities, still huge by European standards. <laughs> but uh, it, there's more diversity there, and that, mm. makes, uh, that makes a difference. Can you, from your data, also see that Chinese uh, travelers are going to less, uh, fewer countries on their itinerary, that they are yes. not doing eight uh, countries in 10 days? Clearly, anymore? they want to focus more on, I mean, of course, you still have 
a lot of Chinese visitors going from one country to the other in a very mm. short time. But, and that goes hand in hand, I think, with uh, the fact that you have more individuals uh, traveling. I think you also have more people willing to, to dive into the culture of a specific, uh, of a specific country. And mm. so they're doing more we'll and more mono destinations. We'll talk more about that uh, this afternoon now. A uh, quick question for uh, Olivier, anyone? Yes. Forward figures? Four. Yes. Well, um, it looks pretty good. <laughs> now, the reason why I, I don't give you a specific answer uh, for this question is that uh, next Monday um, I will present some figures during the uh, the press uh, press conference of WTM, the opening press conference, and we will focus on that. So I wouldn't like to. Uh, Sorry, I, I hope you can make it on Monday. Okay, thank you very much, Olivier. You're most welcome. That was great. Thank you. Big hand.